Turn-based mecha fighter dripping with atmosphere is the most apt description I can give Wolfstride. Originally, I was thinking of making a video covering turn-based RPGs in general, then while getting footage for Wolfstride, I got so hooked, I ended up finishing the game and getting all the achievements while I was at it. So if you're looking for a recommendation and want to stop watching right now, it's sitting pretty on my Steam favorites list. Let me say, this game is flying way too low under the radar for how good it is. It's a first time release from the developer Oda Eamon, a rather small studio in Brazil. I was not expecting that while researching the game. The most viewed video about Wolfstride on YouTube at the moment is a 2 minute video from IGN with 42,000 views. Yeah, this game is getting slept on hard. It's far from perfect, but it makes up for its flaws with how much it does right. I will have minor spoilers for the first part of the game, but will avoid any major revelations in this video. I thoroughly recommend avoiding a summary and playing the game for yourself. For only 15 bucks, a roughly 30 hour game is well worth your money at 50 cents per minute of enjoyment. The OST is absolutely worth picking up as well, but I'll get back to that later. For now, on to the game. Wolfstride is a 2D, black and white, bombastic mecha fighter following the story of Knife Leopard, Wizard, and Shade, the remaining members of the Dead Motherfucker Society. I say remaining as you quickly learn that the mecha, a P1 Gallo 07 model, otherwise known as the Cowboy, is left to the group by GW, a deceased member of the Dead Motherfucker Society. His departure was a big shock for all of them. They now use the Cowboy to gather money to pay off their debts. Wizard wants to sell the mech for cash straight up and be on their way, but Knife refuses to sell it, stating it's what GW wanted from them. You primarily take control of Shade who acts as a manager for the team, arranging fights, overseeing the customization of the cowboy, and earning money through various means around Rain City. The game takes place over 63 days on your journey from the bottom of the barrel nobodies to taking on champions of the mecha fighting world. The game airs in a similar fashion to a TV show, occasionally cutting out to the omniscient foam gun, who fills the players in on what's going on and loves to call everyone trash, which I can vibe with. Along the course of the game, you'll get to know a colorful, albeit small, cast of supporting characters, which I think is a strong point for the story. You really only focus on the characters you are going to be seeing more of. One-off antagonists kind of disappear when you're done with them, which can be a little jarring at first, but keeping in mind that this is a story about the protagonist first makes it more understandable. That's not to say all the supporting characters are just as thoroughly fleshed out as the main cast, but they are all memorable. From the less prominent grocery store duo of Silent Mother Sayuki and Loud Daughter Kala, to the old man Oyabun who swears like a damn sailor. They are all given enough characterization through the story, with the little background we do learn about them, to make them feel real and leave us wanting to learn more. The story can get a little down to the dumps at times, and can ramble philosophical like any anime, which is fine, as it's something the game obviously draws a lot of inspiration from. Most notably represented by Shade, being a pretty close facsimile of Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop, a sharply dressed ex-Yakuza with a little too much angst on his mind at times. This isn't to say he's a one-for-one -one copy of Spike, just that the inspiration is hard to miss. I think they did a great job making the cast unforgettable. Even the one-off antagonists are given just enough nuance that I remember pretty much all of them. If there was a point in the story I had to award the highest marks, it would be the atmosphere. The black and white style is gorgeous. It's a bit more cartoony, but could easily be a manga of its own. And now that I think of that, I would love a comic rendition of the story and cast. After reading the author's notes and their illustrated sideboard, I'm glad to see my observation wasn't unfounded. The overworld and minute-to-minute -minute gameplay is composed of beautifully rendered pixelated sprite work. It hits a sweet spot of looking retro, while not the lazy retro that some game devs have by default when they can't make a game look fantastic. No, this game is beautiful, from the zany portraits to the fluidly animated mechs and combat animations. I'm quite impressed with the art direction. The music is a kick-ass soundtrack through and through. Having 12 years of musical background, I hold properly presented music in a high regard when it comes to any game. The soundtrack bops from swinging jazz, somber piano renditions, electro-pop, and of course kick-ass western spiced rock. Not to harp, but the cowboy bebop vibes are oozing from the seams here. And this is far from a bad thing. I could go for an immediate or even spiritual sequel set with the same art and music direction any day. There truly are very few games that have pulled me in with raw character alone, and currently, Wolfstride is sitting at the top of that list, followed by maybe something like the Yogg or Library of Ruina. Wolfstride's gameplay can be broken down into two parts, mech combat and overworld exploration. The overworld is split between six different areas and the various streets that connect them all. To get between all the areas, you have to exit the map on one side of the screen and run through a street to get to the area selection screen. 
This is a minor gripe I have with the game. There is a loading screen between each map selection, street, and primary location. It's not a major issue, just something that managed to get on my nerves a little when I had to run around the whole time for some of the quests, and the loading screens kept adding up. Small aside here, there comes a point in the game where you can start handing out pineapples to friends to raise their friendship levels. As far as I can tell, this only unlocks extra benefits and a little extra lore for each character. Pineapples can occasionally be found in stock at the grocery store, Rambler and Gambler, for an inconsequential amount of cash. Other than that, the only way to gather pineapples is from minigames. The minigames unlock throughout the story and are honestly a good use of your time to get cash for mech upgrades. The fastest method I found was to get an upgrade from Knife for the Treasure Hunt minigame and Gun for the Big Boy chest, then fail the minigame and collect your prize. Big prize is a pineapple, but you would most likely get other objects that you can sell for a good amount of cash. The bread and butter of the game takes place in the mech arena. Combat takes place with a set amount of action points and movement points defined by your gear. Once you run out, you pass the turn along to your opponent who does the same. You can't see how many action points and movement points an opponent always has, and it always feels like they have more than they should, but the game is pretty well balanced. Actions have set ranges and costs, so having a variety to fit any situation is preferable. Moving costs 1 point per space in the arena, and takes 2 to push an opponent back 1 space. Once a mech is pushed into a corner, a deadlock happens. The mech in the corner cannot push the deadlocker past the halfway point in one go, and the attacker gains a huge attack bonus for each of their attacks. There are positions in the arena that grant static increases and decreases to the attack values as well. The longer a fight goes on, one's morale meter will increase as well. Depending on the stance that the mech pilot prefers, different actions will raise and lower their morale. Once a meter is filled, the next attack performed will deal a bonus amount of damage. Damage is assigned to four parts of each mech, the head, each arm, and chest. Each part of the mech is important for different reasons, and certain moves can't be used if a corresponding part is broken. When a part is damaged or broken, you can repair it every once in a while using abilities that charge up the more you get attacked, or use AP and MP accordingly. These range from resurrecting parts, to healing, or providing slower heals over time with added buffs. The head determines if a mech can choose which part to target. I didn't find myself ever destroying the opponent's head unless I had to, because I always felt like they would hit whatever they wanted anyway. I can't really determine if this was a form of cheating or not, since some attacks seem scripted into their strategy, while other times the enemy would just attack parts at random in an effort to spread out damage. Each arm has their uses. Your left arm and your opponent's right arm are primarily used for damaging abilities, while the other arm was used to put up defenses. Some attacks did require your right arm, though. Many enemies get a guard ability, which will allow them to stack armor on their body parts, providing a flat damage reduction for each attack, and taunting all attacks to said body parts. Finally, the chest can be seen as the main health bar. No matter how many other parts remain functional or busted, the match isn't over until the chest is destroyed. Because of this, my main strategy was to gun for the chest over anything else because that was the only win condition. Although, about halfway through the game this becomes less viable. More guard abilities are put onto your enemies, and they gain access to a slew of deadly attacks worth disabling. Early game, I was focusing chests, mid game I was taking out their left arm and then moving onto the chest, and in the late game I found myself going after both arms to disable all of their chances of recovering, and then destroying their chest while they were sitting ducks. Taking a closer look at it all, each body part functions like a party member in more of a traditional turn-based RPG with healing abilities and general action economy allocated to the whole team. It's a refreshing take on the genre, which I really love. I really do want to see more refinement put into this system and have it fleshed out further. There was enough actions and armors to upgrade through the game, but it left me wanting a bit more. Each tier of play felt like it had one or maybe sometimes two of the right choices for gear. Especially at the end of the game, if you completed all the optional fights, you were decked out in one gear set that trounced anything else available to you. I would have liked to see more options to dedicate yourself to different playstyles that the game hints at with close, mid, and long range tactics. As of now though, it's serviceable and far from a bad system. I would love to see more customization for the cowboy and knife, but for the length of the game, I think it works fine. I kept thinking throughout the game how much I would love to see the exact concept applied to a general combat system, not necessarily applied to mechs. I now want to cover a short bit of major spoilers for the finale of the game. Out of context, it won't ruin anything for you, but I feel the need to address that warning either way. Skip to... if you want to avoid spoilers. Are they gone? Good. Those people are the worst. Remember when I mentioned the combat system applied to the whole game outside of mechs? Well, you get a taste of that right there at the end, and it is everything I wanted from the experience. 
The artwork flows in a live 2D fashion, and the combat animations are beautiful. The fight suffers from the focus on the chess strategy that I used at the beginning of the game, but other than that, it was a bombastic finale. It leaves my expectations wildly high for any kind of sequel Oda Eamon has in store for us. Left Me Wanting More really summarizes my experience with Wolfstride, but in a mostly good way. I had an absolute blast experiencing the story, combat, and characters, but I was always left with a partially filled belly. I wanted to know more about the side characters. I wanted to get to know each of my opponents before a fight at the level of detail of the earlier fights. Although I know that wasn't their focus, it most likely would have detracted from the overall experience to take an entire arc for each opponent. That's it for now. We'll see if it takes me another half a year to put out another video. I mostly cover games as I play them and feel passionate about them. Let me know in the comments if you have played Wolfstride or if I've convinced you to play it. Until then, take care, player trash.